Thanks for joining me for another draw along. Today we're going to go on a river adventure. It's springtime and the waters are flowing, the rivers are moving fast, and we're going to take a boat ride out in the wilderness uh, and go back in time while we're at it. Thanks for joining me. I hope you have fun. Okay, our drawing begins uh, once again with a starting point. One little dot up here it says we're going to do something. We're going on an adventure. It's going to start with that one small mark. Today, rather than drawing a uh, piece of parchment or a treasure map, we're going to draw a piece of birch bark. And to do that, we'll draw a wiggly line that comes along here like this. Another one, skip a space, and another one. We're drawing a piece of bark that was cut from a tree. Uh, probably using a stone tool or maybe a steel knife. And uh, the person who cut it would have reached up as high as they could and, and scored the tree around the top at the high, highest height. And then, uh, and then they would have uh, done another cut down below and then cut a long cut down the middle and peeled the bark away and uh, then weighted it down with rocks. And uh, in time, they would figure out what they were going to use it for, whether a covering for a shelter or a, uh, or a uh, covering for a canoe. And in this case, uh, we're going to use it as our story platform here. As we develop it, we'll make this the background picture that our story will unfold upon. I'm going to draw these little tears and wiggles here to make it look old, like it's been around a lot. Maybe it was used as a covering on a, on a shelter and the village moved and they carried it rolled up and reused it again and over time it began to split and crack. Um, we're going to uh, make another dot here and instead of just those carefree wiggles we're going to kind of copy the line we just drew and um, if you've drawn this border with me before you know I like it. It kind of loosens us up a little bit. It's fun to do. It doesn't take much time. And it creates a, a nice frame for our future masterpiece here. So I'm going to come around like this. If at any time in these drawings you have a different idea for how to draw a border, perhaps you want to use a ruler and take your time and make it look like a real picture frame, feel free to do that. Um, everybody's drawing ends up looking differently, and uh, it's because we all have our own different styles, our own ideas of how things could be done better. And uh, it's a great place to experiment with those ideas and those thoughts. Maybe you have a different way of uh, holding your pencil, shading, and and everything. So you'll notice I'm drawing with a Sharpie pen. When I draw with a Sharpie pen, um, I can't erase. Once I make a commitment to a line, it's there. And that kind of keeps me going forward. I don't back up too much and, and fuss over things. Um, so we now have this, this uh, flag-like shape. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to come down below here. We're going to set the stage. And this time I'm going to draw a shape coming over like this. And I come down here in a line that comes over like that. So it comes around and back. And then from here, I'm going to come over and down. And I get to about right here and draw a line that comes out like that and back. Kind of making this up as I go. I think it's all going to pull together just fine this way, but I got to see. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line that comes back here like this. I'm going to carry this down. I'm going to put two curves here like that. I'm going to have a ponytail hanging down from the head of this person who is standing here, uh, looking out into the scene we're about to create. I'm going to draw a hand here just by drawing a bit of a thumb and then the hand coming around like that. And I'll have this person holding on to, um, sometimes it's a bow, sometimes it's a spear, but I'm just gonna draw this curvy line coming down and show this recurved bow and it's gonna come down like that. I'm going to uh, draw a sleeve that comes over here like this, just to dot it together. Sometimes uh, clothing was made in such a way that the sleeves could be cut and um, uh, it could be stitched together in the in the winter time, so with the arm coverings and and um, and unstitched during the spring, so they could be used for different different kinds of weather. So stitch this up. We'll make it be an early spring scene. And um, I'm going to have just a little bit of uh, right in here. I think I'll draw a little kind of a collar shape, and I'm going to darken this in with some lines to come down here like this. I want to make it look like the sun is coming from the right of the drawing. I'm just going to draw these lines that sort of 
add a shadow in here. And I'll add some curving lines like this, leaving a little separation between the arm and the dark shadow of the of the uh, shoulder there, or the back of the back of the coat. I'm going to add a couple little lines in here and then shadow this in too. But keep in mind that the sun is coming from the right hand side of our drawing. So I'll just draw a line there. You want to make a part down the top of the head, which would be right about there. That's fine. Notice you don't see the person's face. That makes them a whole lot easier to draw. He's looking away into the distance. And so we're just going to see the hair here. Um, along the top of the head, I'd like you to draw some lines sticking up like this. There's a deer's tail that has been tied to tied around the head and uh, down to the down to the back here and it has porcupine quills sticking up through it making what's called a roach and there are many different ways of making this but it's a certain kind of a headpiece that would be worn by um, Anishinaabek people back in the uh, uh, back in the early days we're going back to about uh, maybe the 1600s 16 1700s and uh, we've got this got this person here I'm going to have the line for the bow I have it loose and not, uh, it's just kind of walking along and carrying it. We'll have another person right here. The second one's even easier to draw. They're going to be looking out in that area too. And I'm going to bring this down and this one over here like that. So you see they're kind of lumpy people. It's just a head and figures to, uh, to kind of set the stage. These are not the main characters of the drawing so much as the introductory characters. They're kind of uh, looking where the action is going to be taking place here. I'm going to draw a line that comes back. We'll do the same kind of a thing and, and draw a little curve there. I'll darken this side in and darken that side in a little bit. And another ponytail coming down here like that. And, and this person might be, uh, I'm going to darken the back of his or her coat in like that or clothing and lighten that up. And maybe they're just, uh, maybe they got a package down here that they're, just getting ready to pick up and it's lashed together. And they just stop for a minute and they're looking out at something that's about to happen in the distance. Oh, why not put another one here of a small child over here like this and they can be looking over here, maybe looking over this way, kind of checking out the sounds of the birds in the trees, not so interested in the, in the, uh, the parents are looking at. Speaking of trees, I'm going to draw a tree coming up here like this, and the other side of it's coming down here. Putting this little box in the corner is a great way to uh, um, keep from having to spend all day drawing this tree. I'm just going to draw some curvy lines coming around here. This could be an old oak tree, it could be maple, walnut, it could be all kinds of different types of tree. Up in uh, northern Michigan area we have more pines and, and a lot of birch, which is really good for people who uh, use that birch for cool looking uh, cool looking panels like the one we drew earlier to be able to show our art skills off on. And I'm just drawing some lines here to suggest a texture there, but I'm leaving it light along the right hand side. So we've got this family walking along and they're maybe heading down towards the uh, towards the river and uh, that's where our story is going to take place, but not until we get some branches coming up here like this. and and create a, a darkness around this box in the upper left hand corner which will in time become the most important part of our picture. Just have a little branch sticking out there and uh, I might have another one coming out over here a little bit just to kind of fill this up or frame it in a little bit more. It's going to be springtime in our drawing so we'll keep the leaves kind of small. They're just beginning to fill out and you can draw them coming out like this, just a bunch of little scribbles and wiggles. If you get very specific with it, I really want to draw a particular kind of leaf. You want to do that down below or closer up if you can to see the details of it. This just kind of puts foliage up here and kind of helps pull our eye over this way into the scene where our main part of our story is going to take place. The main character of our story is going to be the shape right here. It's going to start with a dot. And I'm going to draw a line that comes back like this and around. If you drew that little canoe with us, uh, with me last time around, um, you recognize this shape. It looks like a flying canoe. Or actually, it looks like a flying spoon with a curvy handle on it at this point. 
but I'd like you to now keep in mind the basic shape that comes around here. And I'm drawing just dots here because I don't want those dots, uh, that line to show, but it tells us that things far away are going to look smaller as they get closer to us. They get higher, wider, rounder, and they get smaller as they go further back. Again, this is a trick I learned back in fourth grade. I learned it from a good friend of my father's who was a, an artist and I've used it ever since in many different ways. I'm going to draw a curvy line that comes down here. And then I'm going to draw one that comes up above like that. So it looks kind of like this Indian bow we already drew over here. A little different shape to it. The object we're drawing comes in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, different configurations. We'll talk about that more as we get more detailed with it. I'm going to draw a line coming out here. And then I'm going to curve over the top and down and back like this. So it looks kind of like uh, the end of a banana, kind of a lumpy banana shape. If you draw the other end of that banana coming up here like that and down like that, you can actually see that shape. A small letter C curve here shows that uh, this this banana, this flying banana, which is actually a canoe, is um, is um, getting smaller there and larger here. So this makes it look like it's coming towards us. And that's the illusion we want because um, that gives us that 3D kind of action scene we're looking for. I'd like you to draw a burst coming up here like this and another one here. If you drew that little canoe on the bookshelf with me in a previous drawing, you'll see this is a lot more interesting. It's not just sitting on a shelf. It now is pushing through the water. Draw some splashes here. Think of cartoon action splashes coming up and imagine that, imagine that cold water splashing against your face or um, as you're paddling along and blowing in the wind. I'm going to draw another one coming up here like this and another one here like this. So we have this this boat mysteriously flying through open space up in the air. We've got to tie this together. I'm going to start right here like this, coming over, come about that far, and then I'm going to come back like this, and we'll bring it in and then over like that. And um, you may remember this trick in previous drawings. I'm going to draw a line that comes down here now. It's going to show that this this uh, land that these people are standing on is right about here, and this boat is way up there. I'm going to draw this line coming down here and here. I'll just join these two up. In this area over here, you can darken in the background, and I'm doing this very quickly. I'm just drawing scribbly lines that come out. Notice it kind of tapers off as it gets out here towards the white sunlit edge of this, of this cliff. You can see the layers of sediment, the topsoil at the top, and it could be gravel, it could be sand, uh, other things. And I'll do the same thing here, kind of keep it away from that dark area of the package there, whatever they're carrying, and then over in here like this, and just kind of, however you want to indicate that, so it goes from dark to light. On here, you can take uh, one of these bumps, like this one right here, and turn it into a rock. You can draw another rock over here like that. Um, maybe one of these is flint uh, or chert, and something that these Native Americans would be looking for to make their, make their tools. Here's another rock over here. Notice I just took a bump there like that. Maybe this one here, rocks everywhere. And uh, you also have grass growing. You can draw this grass like it's a little further away from these people. And so draw it kind of small, and if you put it around the rocks, it makes them stand out. If you have open area here and you want to make it look more realistic, you can add dragonflies. They'd be close to the river. You can add uh, butterflies, whatever you want that would be flying around in that area. You draw rabbits back here, whatever you like. So now we got this canoe. It's looking like it's flying through the air. And uh, what we want to do is make it look a little bit more realistic, and then we'll set it in its place. I'm going to come up here to the top and um, I'm going to build this canoe kind of like many of the canoes that I've watched being built at uh, environmental school where I work, uh, Goodwillie Environmental School in Forest Hills Schools in Grand Rapids area. Uh, there's a man named Kevin Finney who for many years came into that school and worked with the uh, fifth graders uh, and sixth graders on these canoes and, and built them. They're now on display at the school. and. Uh, the students learned how to lace all of these 
canoes together to uh, to um, prepare the bark and to prepare the lacing, the spruce root, and also to uh, uh, to coat the spruce root with uh, like a pine tar. I'm going to darken this in a little bit here. We got a railing that goes along the top. It's going to come around and up here like this. In this first one here, we've got long laces up above and down below. We're going to Cut them back and forth like this. Just bring them down like that to darken it in and show that it's covered with that, that pine tar. And then uh, come down here with these marks that show the pieces of bark overlapping. And down below, you might have lines coming up here like this. If I go too fast for you, don't worry about it. Just pause and, and continue or just leave that and come back and add to it. Um, Every boat's different, like I mentioned before, so this is a good good position for that, a good, good way to show it off. I'm going to um, draw a bunch of small lines going this way. We'll just kind of darken this area in down below. Uh, this is uh, going to be the natural dark brown marks that you find in, in the lighter birch bark. And it's also going to be in a shadowed area, so I'm going to put them together a little more darkly down here than I do up above. Um, you're going to have lacings here as well, so you can just draw those going along like that. Just a bunch of short little choppy lines in here. And they get smaller back here, so I'll just leave those. In this area, if you want to, um, uh, here, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to draw a patch in here that got stitched in. Maybe they hit a, hit a, uh, a branch sticking out of the water and they had to patch it. It's the kind of boat that the Native Americans used for for perhaps hundreds and hundreds of years in this area. And uh, later on, when the voyageurs, the fur traders, began coming into the area, they adapted, uh, they adapted themselves or their ways to the more efficient uh, canoe, better, better suited for the rivers than their heavier bateaus, their uh, larger, heavier wooden boats. And uh, so I've got this here, and I'm going to add... Um, add some kind of a design in here. I'm just going to put uh, some lines kind of overlapping in, in this area. Uh, you can paint a design in here of any kind you want. It could be a floral design. It could be uh, symbols. It could be like sunbursts coming down. But I'm just going to put those in there just to give it a more personal look uh, so that it uh, be easy to spot along the river with 50 other canoes, figuring out which one is yours, all of them that warm kind of golden brown birch bark color. They would have designs on them to make them stand out. Here is a figure that uh, I'm going to draw. It has a little turtle head there and four feet and a tail there. And I'm just going to put a kind of cross hatch pattern on it. And then what I'd like you to do is just add some more of this grain here. Just put some details in. I'm going to leave it very light here, but back towards the end here, I'm going to darken it in a little bit more. And with your pencils, you can be pressing lighter or harder, depending on the intensity you want on these lines. With my Sharpie pen, it's all pretty much dark, and I just space them apart a little bit more so to make them look lighter or darker. In the earlier drawing I did of the canoe, we drew um, marks of the bear or marks of uh, marks like this one here, for instance, of uh, a branch that started to grow and failed and tree healed itself. And those were all things that would be looked for uh, by people making the most of these natural ingredients and appreciating the uh, the healing ways of trees and things in nature. I'm going to add some little curls around here to make these waves look more like they're churning. They're going to be uh, a little darker over here towards the light side of the canoe to make that stand out. And maybe down in here, and I'll add a little shadow coming up along the from the trough of the wave up to the crest here, and another one here. And you carry these lines right over to the to the edge. In this canoe, I have a person who's about this big, and he's going to be smaller than these guys, but he's going to be kind of standing up, and so I got an oval about that shape right there. And um, I'm going to draw an arm that comes over here, and it's going to come up about that far, and um, 
right here is that's his armpit if you're lost i'm going to come up here and draw just a, a little hook there he's bending at the elbow and his shoulder is going to be coming down this way to his back his chest is going to be right here and he's leaning forward he's really digging into the water he's got his paddle here and as you see it coming up and down here like this to his other hand you can put an eye right about here and then a nose kind of pointing off in that direction. And he can have his hair kind of flying back like this, make it look like he's really paddling hard and the wind is blowing and looks like he's in a hurry. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna darken in skin a little bit like that. Darken in the side of his head. And uh, maybe he's got a necklace on here with an amulet of some kind and darken to this side of the arm, a little bit under the arm there. So you see he's really moving along. In the back here, I'm going to have another paddler, and he's going to be right here. I'm going to draw him right over the back part of that. Even though I'm drawing with a Sharpie, I know I can kind of build that in. I'm going to have him here, and um, I'm going to have him also paddling on this side. Maybe there's an object or something in the river that they have to avoid. That way I can darken in this part of the boat here and just have him coming along. I have his eye here and his hair flying back and just draw a shape that looks kind of like a person back in this area. I don't know what's in this canoe. Perhaps there's a bundle of beaver pelts. There may be some in between these two guys as they're paddling. Um, yeah, I've got two Native Americans in here and maybe they're related. Maybe they're traveling from different areas through these waters and, and um, Maybe they're in the process of trading uh, with one another and um, sharing their sharing their trade goods in time once they land anyway. Um, right here, I'm going to draw a line that does this. It's going to come over the edge of a cliff. It's going to spill over this way like that. And another one that comes out here and it's going to come down about that far. And here's one here coming down. Looked all nice and peaceful while they were just paddling along through the air, but now they're coming to the edge of a waterfall. How deep that waterfall is, how far down it is, depends a lot on, a lot on the way we draw these foamy crests down below. These are indicate the, uh, the point of impact. Maybe there's a, a wave coming down here. It's cresting over and it's hitting a small area and then, then it drops down further from there. Maybe it's just a rapids area that's passing through, but whatever the case, it's going to be an adventure. If you draw curvy lines like these coming down and like this, especially along here, it pushes this waterfall back from this cliff. See, by darkening that in, it pushes this closer to us, and it sets that back. And um, so I'm just going to do this over and over again and come back up here like that. See, I'm kind of copying the curve of this long wiggly line, my guidelines, by adding these lines coming up. Notice by darkening it here, it makes the waves down below, the foam down below look lighter. And now it has some action, some... Uh, some motion going on in this drawing, a little more excitement than just standing by a tree in the woods. To make it look even more dangerous, I'm going to draw a line that comes down here like this. And I'm going to draw a series of rocks back in here that are really close to the boat. So it's a narrow passage between the shores of this, uh, this pass here. To make it look more dramatic, I'm going to darken this in to make the water stand out more bold and white. Step back a little bit and we'll add darkness to this rock. Leave a little shimmer of light between them. And uh, one more time back here. Now notice by darkening up against the canoe, it makes that canoe jump out towards us. All of this light against dark, light against dark is contrast. And that contrast is what adds dimension and depth to our drawings. And to put them together to uh, add drama, to pull the eye to the areas that we're focusing on and uh, make, a, make our story look more believable, more inter interesting. If you draw a line that comes up here, and another one, and another one coming over here like this, another one maybe this way, you have several lines that show a forest on the other side of this riverbank. Now maybe this is a forest of conifers and I'm just gonna add lines that go back and forth like these. And notice I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to 
where they go. I'm going to try to keep them away from the boat a little bit here, except down in this area where I want them to be. Push that boat out a little more. And then over in here, some more lines scribbling back and forth. And up here. Just going to kind of shatter. Some, some trees have branches that go out uh, kind of down and swooping like this. And some conifers and some conifers have branches that reach more up and up and about. So just think of a pine forest, many different pines. And think of how the motion of the river might erode the soil around the edge of these trees, causing them to tip and slant like that over time, just gravity taking hold. And eventually some of these trees might fall into the river and flow down to the bottom. And maybe the branches of one of these trees might cause damage like this in our canoe that needs to be patched in uh, down in the area where where the debris gathers in the, the bend of a river. So now you see by adding these lines here, it's made this, this rock formation over here stand out more boldly. It sets the trees back and pushes the rock forward. I wanna show that there are other trees in, in this drawing that we don't see. So I'm just gonna add some lines like this that come over and a few little lines coming off it and suggest, uh, suggest branches or uh, shadows from trees that we don't even see here. Just have those coming over, maybe shadows from these trees coming out and over the rocks in here, maybe further back. You go a bit further up in our drawing, starting up in here like this, you can do the same thing again. Come down here and here like this and here. So you're seeing this waterfall spill down in the distance from a higher pass. And you can draw land coming up this way and more trees back in here in the distance. Now these are going to be very simple trees. It looks almost like grass growing. Maybe some of this grass grown along, but just put a few little lines back and forth across them so you see that these are also pine trees in the distance. We're going to have this waterfall spilling over, and uh, beyond that, you may see a remnant or just a hint of a forest, a dark forest in the distance here coming along behind that lighter color of the uh, the waterfall here. Maybe something coming back like this to suggest a continuation of this gorge uh, that's been carved by this river over time. And leave this kind of open there to suggest uh, suggest a, um, a mist at the bottom of that waterfall coming over. A few little lines here to add some action to them or motion to them. So we've created this action scene with these uh, these ridges and, and and curvy lines here. Let's come up above and add some clouds billowing up in this area. And some free-floating clouds coming up above like that. And I think I'll carry this bank over here like this so we don't get too close to those trees. And then just draw some dark lines, darker lines up here to make the clouds look more white and billowy by darkening their background. If you add a few lines here, here and here to make it look more round and full, those clouds could look almost like cotton candy. And back in here, if you draw a bird like that, another one here, another one there, you can almost hear them above the water's roar off in the distance. But now you may be wondering what these people are doing, where they're going. Uh, you got a lot of different action going on in here. Um, imagine yourself being a part of this picture as you come over here and draw a shape that looks like your head. And in this drawing, I'm gonna draw myself as a voyageur, somebody coming back into this area long, long ago, perhaps engaged in trade with, uh, with the native people of the region. And uh, so I'm gonna start with this and uh, we're gonna draw my neck coming down like this and shoulder over here like that. I'm going to be looking into the picture, so I'm going to draw my eye right in the middle of my head and then draw my nose pointing over towards the area I'm looking at. I'll draw my other eye like that. If you come down below your nose, you can draw your mouth down here. 
And then I'd like you to imagine how you would, uh, how you would dress back then. I'm going to dress like a voyageur. Native American would have, uh, have their own native clothing, have beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, garb made out of, out of, uh, of animal skins. And, and, but I think I'm going to dress with a, a hat kind of like this. And uh, this is the kind of hat voyageurs would wear. If you want a good book about voyageurs in, in this, uh, this kind of area, along, especially along the, uh, the rivers of the St. Lawrence coming in from, from uh, uh, to the east of here, um, there's a book called The Sign of the Beaver, which most fourth graders in Michigan have encountered. And it's really an exciting book and a good idea, a really good feeling for what's going on in this picture. You could relate to it easily. I'm going to have hair coming down like this and like that and over to the side and down in here. I have a mustache and a beard like this. You might need a few years for that. And then I'm going to have a... Uh, I have a strap coming over here and here so I can carry a big pack over my shoulder here like that. One of these canoes loaded with trade goods would get to a, a narrow pass in the river and the boat had to be portaged or carried around. Uh, uh, the voyageurs would carry large packs of beaver pelts and other trade goods over their shoulders and they wore belts around their waist or wraps around their waist to hold their stomachs in and give, make them stand straight and stay strong. So I'm just going to put me over here like this. And they like to dress kind of fancy, so I might put a pattern on my hat here like this. And um, maybe I have an amulet here. This is called a gorget. Native Americans would have them, often made out of stone and, and uh, shell. And uh, people from England and France, the early voyageurs and settlers who came into the area, the explorers would would have uh, uh, these often made of silver or brass. And um, just to make my clothing look more fancy, I think I'm going to add a pattern around it here like this. They definitely liked to style back then. They would put, they'd wear the brightest, boldest colors they could sometimes. And sometimes they just dressed in uh, the same kind of clothes Native Americans did and kind of fit right in. So. Um, once you're done with that, I'd like you to come down here and uh, I'm going to sign my name over here on the drawing. Hope you can read yours better than I can read mine. And uh, over here, I'm going to write the date. And uh, the date, today's date here is um, uh, 4 for April and it's the 15th and um, 20 for the year 2020. Now, this is maybe this might be. Um, this might be 1720 or 1620, and uh, it could be uh, more like more like the 17s in this picture here, and uh, it'd give you an idea of um, what life was like in the woods, the woodland areas of Michigan back then. Up here is a place where you can add a title, you can add a design on the borders, maybe a Native American design or maybe some fancy uh, uh, voyageur design. But this is it for this drawing. Uh, I'd like you to do, I'd like to encourage you to add color to it. This would be very bright, beautiful colors. Just think of spring colors here. Think of the golden, warm colors of the clothing and the, and the fresh waters of the of the uh, river pouring over the waterfall there, and and have some fun with that. Uh, thanks again for drawing with me. Come back again. We got more coming up.